Uh, so what I'm going to do over the next 30 minutes is uh, give you a state of the school address. Uh, there's a lot of information that I'm, I'm going to present, uh, but I'm going to have to do it quickly. So this presentation will be online for those who, who uh, want to study it in more detail. I don't know how many of you want to do that. <laughs> So um, first, I want to start with uh, mentioning some of our research accompl accomplishments uh, over the last year, some of which have already been uh, mentioned. And uh, you know, one of the ways we do measure the quality of our uh, science is how competitive we can be in getting uh, research funding. And that is uh, NIH funding. So as Mr. Tisch uh, mentioned, that we're now uh, number 12. Uh, we're in good company. Uh, we are by far the best funded independent medical school and are competing very effectively with all the big universities. But in a sense, most importantly, is that our science is leading to breakthroughs that are going to help our patients. And Mr. Tisch gave some uh, examples, uh, but there are many others that you uh, will hear about over the course of the next year. We've made a number of new appointments over the last year that are very important uh, to the functioning of our medical school. Uh, several new deans, including uh, Carol Horowitz, who was uh, named uh, Dean for Gender Equity in Science and Medicine uh, in the first part of this year. Uh, Rhoda Sperling, more recently, has been named Dean for Industry Engagement and Conflicts of Interest. We have new department chairs and institute directors. Sarah Millar, who's going to get an endowed chair uh, tonight, and Louis Pasquale, who became director of our New York Eye and Ear and Vision Research Institute. And our faculty practice, which is among the largest uh, in the country, uh, named new leadership there in terms of Ann Dickerson and Matthew Rosamond. Karen Tiger has been named Senior Associate Dean for Faculty, Staff, and Trainee Relations. And most recently, Alexis Colvin has been named Associate Dean for Alumni Affairs a uh, very important um, appointment because we are working hard to establish closer relationships uh, with the tens of thousands of Mount Sinai alumni. So what about uh, uh, education? Recently, our newest class uh, in the medical school was uh, admitted and matriculated. Uh, these are the metrics. You can see how hard it is to get into Mount Sinai. Average GPA of 3.82. Um, MCAT score very high, coming from the top universities in the uh, United States. And what we say that is truthful, that most of our faculty, including me, uh, would not be admitted to Mount Sinai. So we have a great class of students, not only by their metrics, uh, but also by the, their passion, their, their passion for social justice, uh, their, their pa passion for gender equity, their passion uh, for science, um, they, they want to do it all, and we're here to be their teachers and make sure that that's possible. Uh, we have several MD-PhD students who come to us every year, and they're here uh, for eight or nine years, become uh, physicians and also uh, scientists, and they are also a remarkable group of students. We also have a program uh, that is unique in the United States, where we ad admit students after their sophomore year, and they matriculate once they have graduated uh, from college. And the reason we have this program is to attract students who are not bound by traditional uh, requirements for medical school, so we can attract students who are majoring, uh, majoring in the humanities, or in computer science, or physics, um, and chemistry. And, and the, the quality of this, this uh, student group is also uh, extremely high. Our medical education uh, faculty are very busy this year, uh, in part because we're, go we're going to be visited in about a week uh, by the LCME, which is the accrediting body uh, for medical schools. Importantly, this year we announced an enhanced scholarship initiative. Uh, student debt for uh, attending medical school is extremely high. Uh, some students have hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, and we and now several other medical schools in the country have said this is unacceptable. 
So through the genera uh, generosity of our Board of Trustees, uh, we now have an enhanced scholarship initiative so that students whose family cannot uh, afford uh, much of the cost of medical school are getting scholarships so that the maximum debt after four years of medical school is $75,000. This enables our students to pick their specialty not based on paying off their debt, uh, but what their passion is about. We have many new policies, including a, a policy related to unprofessional conduct. And we have many new recruits in our department of medical education. I'm not gonna be able to go over that right now, but um, outstanding uh, faculty taking on important positions. We have named uh, one of our lecture halls uh, the Friedman Hall uh, for the Friedman family, led by Rich Friedman, because of their generosity and commitment uh, to Mount Sinai. Uh, Rich Friedman, along with uh, Jim Tisch, are the co-chairs of the Mount Sinai Board of Trustees. We also have uh, completed a renovation of the lobby of Aaron Hall, the first floor of Aaron Hall, uh, where many of our students live, uh, to create a center for learning and uh, development. Racism and bias has no place at Mount Sinai, so we have uh, initiated this year a Change Now initiative related to racism and bias. In terms of graduate uh, medical education, that's uh, training the, uh, the specialist associated with the medical field. Uh, we have the largest, uh, uh, with the largest sponsor of graduate medical education in the United States. We have 2,500 or more residents and clinical fellows associated with our, uh, with our hospitals uh, since 9th, uh, 2014. Uh, we now have sponsored six accredited programs at uh, Mount Sinai South Nassau, uh, which started in July of, of 19. So we have a very, very busy postgraduate program led by Michael Lightman. Many new initiatives there and many new awards. Uh, just to mention uh, two here, very prestigious awards. Uh, for example, uh, uh, some of our residents um, and faculty teams got the David Leach Award, which was uh, awarded uh, to six programs out of 12,000 programs. Our, our training programs at Mount Sinai Hospital and now at our other hospitals as part of the Mount Sinai Health System uh, are very competitive, and this indicates some of the, uh, the, the ranks of our programs. Uh, frankly, uh, I think our programs are better than, than these rankings, and um, in part, these training programs ranking is a popularity uh, uh, contest, so you know, we're gonna be uh, working even harder, so uh, the, the rank relates to how good our graduate medical education uh, programs really are. What about our graduate school? So we have a graduate school, uh, an outstanding graduate school led by Marta Filizola, where we train PhD students, postdoctoral students, trainees, um, and, and uh, several hundred students who get master's degrees at Mount Sinai. The PhD uh, students that matriculated in 2019 were the best class that we've ever had. And this indicates uh, their qualifications, very high GPA, Note 70% of the matriculating class are women, which is very gratifying uh, given we want more women going into science and medicine. Many undergraduate schools from around the country are represented. These are some of our master's programs that are a very important part of what we uh, do here in terms of education. Many accomplishments over the past year uh, associated with the graduate school. I'm not gonna be able to go over all of them, but uh, what I really wanna highlight is that the graduate curriculum has been changed in response from our students to learn more about data science and entrepreneurship. We are um, an institution uh, that emphasizes thinking out of the box, thinking boldly, go where others may have not gone to make the discoveries that changed the lives of our patients. That's what Mount Sinai is all about. This um, 
This just happened this past weekend where five of our former postdoctoral uh, trainees who had formed a, their, own, their own company decided to give back uh, to Mount Sinai. And so they have given uh, uh, funds, $50,000, uh, for entrepreneur awards to be awarded to our uh, postdocs. It was very inspirational uh, when we gave out the award uh, this past uh, week. We have an Office of Academic and uh, Development and Enrichment uh, led by Lakshmi Devi, who's getting an endowed chair today. And that's uh, to make sure that we are providing the kind of mentorship that our medical students, our graduate students, our postdoctoral uh, uh, students, and our faculty, and our younger faculty, are getting the mentorship that uh, they need. So we have many new initiatives uh, that st were started in the past year. We also have uh, a very important Office of Diversity and Inclusion, uh, led by Gary Butts, uh, who is a dean at the school. Mount Sinai Health System was ranked number one among health systems and hospitals uh, in the past year, and number 19 of 500 overall companies uh, in Forbes 2019 uh, Best Employers for Diversity. This is part of our DNA, uh, that we provide an environment uh, for everybody to uh, succeed. Uh, and nobody's good enough, and so we're always looking for ways to improve how we provide uh, for diverse populations in terms of our patients, our staff, our trainees, and our uh, faculty. Uh, th this uh, is a new program that we just started uh, this past week. And it's the brainchild of Gary Butts, uh, you know, our dean related to diversity. And so we have uh, formed a diversity innovation hub. And that's a unique academic um, health system hub dedicated to eliminating health and healthcare disparities through entrepreneurship and community in engagement. Uh, and we had a, a great conference associated with this uh, several days ago. And uh, the school is going to provide funds to uh, enhance uh, the innovation associated with this diversity hub. And as I mentioned uh, earlier this year, uh, we uh, named a new dean, Carol Horowitz, for gender equity in science and medicine. Many new initiatives associated with uh, the office led by Dr. Horowitz and relates to all our campus, all genders and backgrounds, all faculty and trainees. We are looking at several uh, different areas, including compensation equity, recruitment and retention, family-friendly policies like lactation rooms, uh, looking at uh, issues related to gender bias and mistreatment, and also mentorship, leadership, and sponsorship. There have been important advances over the past year uh, related to those topic areas, uh, but we're, we're not done. It's not good enough. And so this will be an area of emphasis as we go forward. Many accomplishments. <laughs> now, we've also established uh, over the past year an Office of Wellbeing and Resilience led by uh, John Ripp and, and his staff. And one of the reasons uh, this was important, in fact, uh, John Ripp is also our Chief Wellness Officer, the fourth such uh, wellness officer in, uh, in the country. And I should mention when we named uh, Carol Horowitz Dean for Gender uh, Equity in Science and Medicine, that was the first such dean position in the United States. One of the reasons establishing this office has been so important, because the, the rate of burnout uh, among medical students and um, house staff and faculty is too high. The rate of depression and anxiety um, among physicians and medical students and graduate students is too high. In fact, if you look at uh, the rate of those conditions compared to the general population, it's almost double uh, the rate. So th there's enormous stress associated with becoming physicians and scientists. And we need to be one of the places that works to reduce this stress. 
Uh, we completed a, a survey of almost 2,000 of our faculty this year, have identified areas that we need to work on uh, to help our faculty, and we'll be um, working on those areas uh, over the coming year. Uh, we mentioned uh, earlier that the NIH funding, uh, we had a very good year. Uh, the NIH goes up about 5 to 7% every year in terms of the funds available. This year we went up 13%, so we're about double uh, the rate of increase in terms of money coming uh, from NIH. And you could see that um, a number of our departments among the very best in the United States, if not uh, the world, genetics, microbiology, neuroscience, uh, pharmacology, and also our clinical departments are becoming stronger and stronger in translating work that comes out of the lab uh, into the clinic, into the hospital, uh, so that we, we are one of the hubs of the discovery of new treatments. And one of the ways we make that happen is we have a, an office which has typically been called tech transfer, but we think that doesn't fully uh, describe what uh, this group does. It's Mount Sinai Innovation Partners, uh, led by Eric Liam. And what they do is that they work with our faculty and our trainees to identify research that has the potential to be commercialized and get to our patients. And uh, th this reflects the work they have done, uh, including, as you can see, over 200 patents uh, in the past in the, uh, the past year. And uh, we have spun out a, a number of our technologies, in, including companies such as Hypercell, uh, Renalytics, uh, most recently Trained Therapeutics, and uh, we use our funds to enhance our science so that more startup companies can uh, come out of Mount Sinai as science. And most recently, we, uh, over the past several days, which ended yesterday, we had uh, our annual innovation conference, and this, this, uh, this year it focused on uh, artificial intelligence. As part of the, the, the conference, we had a hackathon. And uh, we had over 160 registered uh, uh, individuals, and 137 uh, started, and 119 completed. And th this happened over a weekend, that 19 teams uh, worked on a problem, uh, came up with possible ideas to solve that problem, and uh, three finalists uh, you know, won uh, prizes. But what was really amazing was that, particularly the young people that came from all over, this is not just from Mount Sinai, uh, to think bold thoughts, deep thoughts, stayed up all night, uh, to come up with new ideas, and it was amazing to hear what they came up with in a short period of time. And kudos go to uh, Scott Friedman, Ravi, uh, Rama uh, Iyengar, and others to make this happen. We have a very uh, large faculty practice. Uh, it's among the largest in the, in the country with several thousand Mount Sinai uh, doctors. Uh, we had a very good year. Uh, the number of ambulatory encounters is you know, well over a million. We have emphasized how to make sure that the quality of the care debt that we delivered uh, is unrivaled, that the patient experience is tremendous. And so we, we follow that very carefully uh, with our uh, departments, chairs, and, and our faculty using data. It helps drive what we need to do. We're very focused on access, so that if a patient needs to be seen the same day, we find a Mount Sinai doctor to provide the care. Uh, and this is an on ongoing work that's very important, that the care you receive at Mount Sinai is patient-centered. And in terms of the financial results, uh, you know, running a medical school is, uh, is not a profitable business, uh, but, but so that if you break even, you're doing very well. Uh, th this year, it, it looks like we will do that. Uh, the funds to run a medical school come in a very small part from tuition. Uh, it comes from the research. It comes from our faculty practice. And it, 
It comes from philanthropy and generosity of, of our patients and our board of trustees. We're always uh, very careful in how we manage our resources. We have a lot of unexpended uh, unex uh, expended, uh, grant backlog, which is good. So it means that we have a lot of money to then further invest in our, our science. Uh, we are looking at how we can best uh, enhance the space that we need for our research and clinical programs. Uh, we work very closely uh, with our hospitals. One of the great things about Mount Sinai, our health system, is that our school and our hospital system uh, are very tightly uh, aligned, work very, uh, we row in the same direction, and that is provide great care and do great research. In 2017, we, uh, through the work of many of our faculty and outside consultants, developed a strategic plan for the medical school and the health system. And, and these were our guiding principles. To take advantage of the size and excellence of the Mount Sinai health system. To establish unrivaled excellence in medical and graduate education. To anticipate and fund new areas of research that will result in the discovery of novel approaches to disease diagnosis and treatment. And, and that's the key, actually, to a, an outstanding strategic plan, and that is to anticipate where is the science going, uh, to invest in that and make bold discoveries for our patients. And, that, and essentially, with number five, to power at Mount Sinai an engine of discovery to create more intellectual property, more collaboration with industry, more Mount Sinai companies, and more treatments for our patients. So we have many new, I'm not gonna go over this, but you'll see this on the website. We have many new initiatives associated with this uh, strategic plan that began in 2017. Uh, we've created new institutes focusing on digital health, biomedical engineering, transformative clinical trials, a center for genomic health, and that is to implement as important genetic findings uh, are identified, we get that into uh, our patient, get, to, get that for our patients so that they might know what they're at risk for and what kind of treatments they're gonna need in the future. So, um, there's a lot of things we're gonna be doing over the next year. Uh, we're working together with our hospital system uh, to work to develop a, a new building on the corner of 98th and Madison, which we expect to be an iconic building on our campus. It'll be a gateway to our campus. It will allow, uh, allow expansion of our faculty practice and also to enhance our initiatives related to digital health, artificial intelligence, and biomedical engineering. To help this occur, we are in, uh, we are in a capital campaign, working together uh, with our board of trustees and others uh, to raise $2 billion. We could use your help in case <laughs> you have the, the ability. Uh, we've done well so far, uh, and that will enable us to do what we need to do for all our hospitals, our ambulatory sites, and the, uh, the medical school. I want to end uh, uh, by thanking Peter May, uh, who uh, was our chair of our board of trustees for many years. He was an insightful leader, dedicated to Mount Sinai to achieve its full profession. You can see all the things that he has done for us. He enabled us to go from good to great, to be among the best medical schools and health systems in the world. And we thank him for his inspirational leadership and wisdom. And we look forward, Ken and I and others, uh, to working with our new co-chairs of the board, and that is Richard Friedman and James Tisch. Thank you very much. <laughs>